How often are you checking your investments? How often do you check the price of Bitcoin or the price of your stocks or the price of your altcoins? How often are you actually having a look at those prices? If the answer is several times per day, then there's something that needs to be fixed. Because very often, if you're not trading multiple times per day, which you probably shouldn't, if you're not trading that often, there's no real reason in checking those prices. It's much more important to use the time for something productive, to use it maybe for research or to use it maybe to develop one's skills, etc. If you're checking the prices several times per day, you're probably over-invested. Now, the issue is that we want to be invested with quite some significant money because we want to make a lot, right? If you only invest $100 and that makes 50% return, it doesn't really change much. But if we invest $10,000, that makes a 50% return. Suddenly, this matters quite a bit. So it appears as if we have to go through this pain. It appears as if we have to check multiple times per day. It appears as if we have to live with that fear if we also want to gain substantially. But I think there's also another solution to this, and that's to buy assets that don't have too much correlation and we can afford more exposure to something risky if we buy something less risky at the same time. So let's say you were to put those $10,000 into a risky altcoin and maybe your net worth is $30,000. Okay, so a third of your money is on a highly risky bet, which by the way, I wouldn't recommend, but let's say you go YOLO, let's say your income is also very high. So even if that altcoin was to go to zero, you could save this up in another one or two months and you should be fine again, right? So let's say your income relative to your wealth is relatively high. And so you do this YOLO investment and you check this altcoin price every few minutes and you're simply just hoping for it to go up. And if it only goes down by 10 or 20%, you would already exit. If that's you, then probably it makes sense to at least partially hedge. Now there's different hedging mechanisms, right? So instead of just investing $1,000, if you want to invest those 10,000, you could hedge, for example, against the general macro trend of crypto. So say you believe that that altcoin is going to go up, then your main thesis is that that altcoin is going to outperform Bitcoin and Ethereum. Because if you don't think that the altcoin outperforms Bitcoin and Ethereum, then why take on all that risk, right? So you want the altcoin to outperform the rest, but you don't necessarily want to bet on the macro, right? You have no idea where Bitcoin and Ethereum is going to be in one or two weeks. So one solution would be to potentially short Bitcoin and Ethereum, while at the same time you buy the altcoin. What that means is that overall you're reducing risk so you still have the 10K exposure, you still believe in the altcoin, but in case Bitcoin and Ethereum goes down, you're somewhat protected. So what you're doing with a setup like this is, you're isolating the bet. So you're not betting on the altcoin going up and the crypto market going up because the price of an altcoin is determined by both the general macro, but also the attention on the individual altcoin. You're just betting on the individual altcoin isolated from whatever the general market is doing. Here are the videos that work on YouTube. XRP will be $12,000 guaranteed or an AI explosion, top three cryptos to buy in November. A lot of pushing of greed, that's what gets the clicks. What doesn't get the click is a tutorial on how to make back tests, on how to build those sheets that in the end figure out what historically worked well in the past. The back test that I often show here on this channel. I still very much enjoy producing this kind of content though. I also share these kinds of sheets, but I don't do it on YouTube. You also get direct access to me. Feel free to check it out. It's thebitcoinstrategy.com. And I personally believe this kind of approach is very useful. For example, also when you short an altcoin. So instead of betting on the altcoin to 10x, you can bet on an altcoin to underperform Bitcoin and Ethereum. A lot of altcoins do worse than Bitcoin and Ethereum over the very long term, right? because of tokenomics, because of insider selling, because of attention shifting from altcoin to altcoin. So it's just a few number of altcoins that do very well and the majority of altcoins doesn't do that well. But when crypto as a whole is going up, when Bitcoin goes up by 10, 20, 30%, then of course, even the bad altcoins can also go up. Maybe not by 20%, but maybe by 10%. And so if you're shorting the altcoin versus the US dollar, you're still losing. Thus, 
I think it makes sense if you're bearish on an altcoin to short this against Bitcoin and against Ethereum. So the relative valuation. It's not that straightforward of a play, but still you're isolating your thesis, right? You distance yourself from the overall macro if you don't want to bet on the macro, if you simply just want this altcoin to do worse than the rest. And so something very similar can be said, say, for the stock market. Let's say you don't bet on individual stocks. Let's say you bet on the overall stock market and you've got a lot of your net worth in the stock market. And you've got now so much money in the stock market that you're checking the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq several times per day because you're wondering what's going to happen with all of that net worth. If that's you, right, and you want to hold stocks over the long term, you can't afford to check those prices all the time. You can, again, hedge yourself against this. Now, what's the best way to hedge a stock portfolio? I believe it's something that you can still hold long term that does not lose against monetary debasement. And that's mainly precious metals. So that's gold and silver. And it doesn't really need that much gold and silver to hedge against a potential stock market crash. Because when you look at the relative valuations of gold and silver to, for example, the S&P 500, the swings are very, very large. So when gold outperforms the stock market during those kinds of times, it outperforms the stock market easily by 10x and more. So if you only have, say, 5 to 10% of your stock market investment not invested in stocks, but instead invested in gold and silver, right? You've got 5 to 10% of that allocation in something that's lowly correlated, that's low risk, then you're already very well protected against a crash. So you don't have to worry anymore about a crash because your gold and silver is going to appreciate. And are you really losing that much expected return if 5 to 10% of your portfolio is in something that might maybe not appreciate by 10% per annum, but only by 6 or 7% per annum? Right? The expected long-term return isn't that different. You're not losing too much performance. You still mainly get your money with stocks, but you are protected quite well just by having a small fraction of your investment in gold and in silver. I believe this is very, very useful. I know some people disagree. For example, Warren Buffett, he says he would never buy silver. But what he does instead is he buys bonds. Right? And bonds also have a very low correlation to stocks. So you simply have to find the one or two asset classes that you use for hedging. You simply have to find a mechanism that ideally has negative correlation to your risk on bet but at least has neutral correlation. So it's zero correlated against the thing that you're betting on, right? You don't want that the two assets that you're holding crash at the same time. You want that the two assets move in different directions at the same time so that when the stock market crashes, that you've got something that held up its value that you can then use potentially to buy the crash with. And it's the same with the altcoin bet, right? If your altcoin goes down because Bitcoin and Ethereum crashed, that's not that bad if at the same time you shorted Bitcoin and Ethereum. Your short will go up in value, thus you still have some money left. And that's one of the main objectives in investing, right? You want to stay in the game for as long as possible. If you go down by 50% in your overall net worth, you need to double subsequently just to be back to square one. So hedging against the downside volatility is super important. And again, you don't lose that much expected return doing so. If it's your first time here, feel free to subscribe. I publish videos regularly. A like would be very much appreciated as well. It helps the channel grow. And in case you've got Telegram, feel free to join us in Telegram as well. The link is down below. Looking very much forward to chatting with you. Cheers.